GMBC rep to have class today. Please remember to consult with your healthcare physician prior to starting or changing your exercise regimen. Make sure when you're taking this class that you are wearing loose, comfortable, and supportive clothing. To start from the shoes on up, you want to make sure that you have on good, nice-fitting shoes that are not worn on the soles. Make sure you're also wearing um, comfortable bottoms as well as comfortable and supportive tops. If at some point in time during this workout, if you feel that you need to take a break, then I encourage you to do so. Please feel free to just have a seat for a moment, take a couple of deep breaths before I jump it back into class with me. When checking this out on social media, please use all forms of social media to look up the UMBC rep. And that includes our Facebook page as well as our uh, YouTube channel. So today we're going to talk about strength training. And we have always integrated some strength training into our workouts. Up to this point, we have not used any equipment to help us to do so, but we're going to start doing that. So I want to introduce to you some things. Um, first things first, strength training is very important to your workout. Um, you should be working out for at least five days a week, okay? And this does not include your activities of daily living. And activities of daily living are things you do every day. Like you get out of bed every day and you walk to the restroom after you get out of bed. That's a part of activities of daily living. Um, you go grocery shopping and when you do, you tend to carry some heavy bags into the house so that you can unload the groceries. Activities of daily living. Where you're using the same type of muscles and body parts that you would during a, a workout, but you're not actually using them to work out. And that's where the transition comes in with strength training. So strength training should be at least two days out of your workout, okay? So if you're working out for five days, you should try to get at least three days of aerobic exercise in your workout, and it could be just aerobic. And then you should have at least two days of just strength. You don't have to do it that way. You can always mix and match. So you can always put in some aerobic slash cardio moves in a workout for the day, and then integrate some strength training parts in it as well. I encourage you to try to get a little bit of strength training in every day, especially as the older that you get. Um, when you are thinking about muscles, think about the fact that you are strengthening your bones as you strengthen the muscles around your bone. You are getting the ligaments around each bone moving, active, making them a little bit more agile, more loose. Um, more ready to go when you're ready to go, okay? They're becoming less stiff because you are strengthening everything around them to work just as well as your work uh, as you use them. Uh, when you're using or when you're doing strength training, you don't always have to have weights. As you've seen in the past, we've used our own body weight to help us to strengthen our muscles. We've done that by doing exercises such as push-ups, We've done exercises such as squats, even arm circles out to the side, simply holding up our arms at shoulder height is a move that uses our own body weight to work the muscles in our arms, starting from the shoulder and going all the way down to the fingertip. Know that there are muscles in all parts of your body, okay? Your bones are connected to your tendons, which are connected to your muscles. And your bones are connected to ligaments, which are also connected to your other parts of bones. So everything is connected together. And in order for them to be a team and to work effectively to help you be the best you that you can be as you condition this body, the only body that you have, to be the best body you can have, they all need to communicate with each other. So a part of our strength training, um, when you are starting out with strength training, you should still start it with a good warm-up. Now, your warm-up doesn't have to be as long as it would be if you were doing a dynamic move workout or if you were doing a straight plyometric workout or if you were doing an anaerobic workout, all things that we talked about. Workouts that are going to help you to burn fat even after the workout is done. And that sometimes includes some very intense moves like jumping jacks 
and jump squats or um, high knees, things like that. Those exercises are done for short periods of time and they are also um, done for minimal amounts of reps. Well, the same thing can be applied to when you're using uh, equipment to do different strength training exercises. When you're working with heavier weights, uh, if your idea is not to become very defined, uh, I still encourage you to use heavy weights, but just use them in less reps. And we'll talk more about that soon. If you're looking to simply maintain your muscular strength, then what you want to do is you want to start off with a very light weight, and then you want to move yourself up, and then you want to continue to diversify your workout with different moves. Not necessarily with changing up the weight. You can do that, but you don't have to do that right away. So you might be saying, Paula, I see that you have a lot of equipment there. Um, what if I don't have the money to afford that equipment? That's totally fine. Start off and maintain the plyometric workouts, the workouts that use your body as your weight. Keep doing your push-ups. Keep doing your squats. Keep doing those exercises that never get too much or never become too common where they don't still have you develop muscle and burn fat. But also know that I'm going to provide you with some household options you can use today. So before we get into our warm-up, I want to introduce to you some of these pieces of equipment. This is a weight bar, okay? They come in various lengths, sizes, and weights, okay? Um, they typically can be used for any weight-bearing exercise. Do know that if you get them, they don't always look like this. This one has a padding around it, okay? Um, this one is about 35 pounds, and they come in pound in weight, excuse me, as little as two pounds. So the bars you can use for things that you do behind the head, um, with the bar resting on your shoulder, um, you can have the bar even above your chest when you're laying down, or you're on an incline. A bar is a great option to have, um, where you, you can have both hands on the bar at the same time, okay? Now, as I mentioned, this bar is padded. Sometimes they are not. Sometimes they are just a metal bar. Sometimes they have weights on the end of the, the metal bar, and you have a clip that you attach to the end. Um, typically, those weights can be used with a weight bench or without a weight bench. So that's one option, a weight bar. Now, because this item is padded, I didn't introduce to you the fact that Part of your equipment when you're doing strength training is gloves, right? So we didn't really use them when we were learning about all the other exercises and doing mainly aerobic exercises. But do know when you start working with weights, go ahead and protect your hands with some gloves. So these are just gloves with the fingers cut off. I got them at a store. You can buy them online. They are padded on one side and they are stretchy on the other side. Sometimes they come with a Velcro strap that goes around the back of the hand. I always put my gloves on whenever I'm working with weights, whether the weights are padded or not. Um, I like to have nice soft hands at the end of the day, and this helps to prevent calluses on my hands for when we're working with the weights. Because whether you want to believe it or not, you're going to squeeze the weight, create some tension and traction on that weight. And in doing so, you're probably going to get some calluses. The other thing is it helps to prevent slippage. So slippage, meaning your hands, when they get sweaty from while you're working out, they won't get too, uh, too much sweat on the actual weight and therefore cause an incident where the weight isn't falling on your foot. So again, I highly recommend getting the gloves, using the gloves as often as you need to, especially when working with weights. All right, so as I mentioned, you have a weight bar. Um, in the weight bar category, sort of, um, this is also a form of a weight bar, but this is also a free weight. And this free weight is an example or a smaller example of what a non-padded weight bar could look like, but this is just a very short version and I use these as dumbbells instead. And as I mentioned, they come with plates. You can put a, an end on it so that you can secure the weight. Um, you can pick these up anywhere and you can get them in all different sizes. Now, 
This is adjustable. I have various plates that I use to adjust the weight. This is a 2.5 pound plate. And on my weight uh, right now, I have a six pound plate. So if I wanted to, I can make this at least eight pounds, 8.5 pounds to be uh, technical, and add it on to one side. Um, whenever you're adding the weights, you want to make sure that they're even on both sides. So if you add a six pound plate with a 2.5 plate on one side, you want to do the same thing to the other side to balance it out. I have a pair of these. I also have other dumbbells that are not padded. They're simply metal. They're cold to the touch. Um, they are a single size weight. So these are just five pounds. I cannot add weights to this to make it any heavier than it is. It is five pounds. It's always going to be five pounds, and that's all that it is. And then I also have some padded dumbbells, okay? They have a nice material on the outside. These would be great, or I would use these if I didn't want to use gloves, okay? Um, because they don't get as slippery as they do. My hands wouldn't get as slippery as they would with the metal weights, and this weight is not so easily uh able to slip out of my hands if I don't have my weights that day, my gloves that day, sorry. Um, I also have what's called a kettlebell. This one is very small. These come in different sizes as well. Um, sometimes you can get them in, even in a different shape. Um, I recently saw that you could get them at a particular store where you can fill them with water and the water level amounts to a different weight variation. So um, you can look into that as well, or you can get a set of kettlebells, and these are also great to use. They come with a handle. This handle is metal, but the actual bell itself is has a coating around it um, to protect it when it hits the floor. So uh, the metal itself is going to be, again, hard and full to the touch. Use gloves when you use these, and get whatever size you feel that you need. In addition to that, um, weights can also be in the form of ropes. So this is a weighted rope. Um, the weighted rope could be used for if you like to do um, anything overhead or in a swinging motion. And the weight, it's not much on this rope, but they can get bigger, thicker, and longer um, as much or as big and thick and long as you want them to be. And it's totally up to you how you what you want to purchase or what you find useful for your for your area um, and these can be used for figure eight they can be used for slams they can be used for jumping rope okay um, I also have something here called a weight ball it's filled with sand and I this is about 20 pounds and I can use this to um, catch and I can use it for pull-ups sit-ups I can use it for squats. Um, it's rubberized on the outside. It has some ridges too to help massage your hands at the same time that you're using it. Um, but again, I still use gloves no matter what because it's easier and I think it's best practice. Finally, I want to show you um, ankle weights. Ankle weights, as well, they're also called wrist weights. Now, these are weights that are typically filled with either metal plates or sand. This one has sand in it as well as um, this one does not. But what you could do, so this one has sand in it, but the other one does not. The ones with sand are of a particular weight. So these are two pounds each. And what you do is they have a Velcro. You're gonna do the Velcro, you wrap it around your wrist or your ankle, okay, and then you Velcro it to the amount of tightness that you want around your wrist or your ankle. Now, do know that sometimes this is the next step up um, for some folks who decide, I've done walking, I like walking, but now I want to add some more strength to my walk. So they'll sometimes add ankle weights or these weights to their ankles or to their wrist to help add some weight. Um, that is okay. Just be sure that you are ready for that, that your body is ready for that. And make sure that they're not a tripping hazard for you. Um, sometimes, depending on the weight, 
they can the velcro can become undone and it can slip down to your top of your shoe and before you know it it's an incident where you tripped over it and fallen so all i say is just make sure they're well and secure before you start on your walk try them out on a nice um, firm flat surface try them on at home first walk around a little bit see how they feel to you before you decide to go out and walk with them and then the ones with um, the plates or they have sometimes packs of weight in there they can be adjustable meaning that they have little slides and pockets in them where you can add more weight and the plates are purchased separately some of them come with a couple of plates to get you started but know that you can purchase the plates separately. So these are just some options that you can use for strength training. Today what we're going to use though is some household items. So I picked up some things out of my own home. This is a bottle of oil. This oil is 128 fluid ounces and that equates to about 8 pounds. Um, so when you're using this, if I were to use this for my weight, which I am today, I would get two, okay? And you can use it and use it however you see fit for you, yourself and for your body. Then I also have a smaller bottle of oil. This is about 48 ounces, okay? So this is about um, a quarter of the size of this one. So um, when I'm getting ready to use this, I am going to be sure that I'm wearing gloves with it. And I'm going to be sure that I have a good grip on the weight when I start to use it so that it doesn't slip out of my hand. I also want to make sure that it's a sealed bottle. Please don't make an attempt to use an unsealed bottle or an open bottle because what you'll find is you think it's sealed and it's not and you'll have a very slippery uh, incident where it's dripping out of your hands. A very slippery incident where it's dripping out of your hands while you're working with it. So just be mindful of that. The next thing I have is a household item are bottles of juices. <laughs> um, so I have two bottles of juices. Each one is 64 fluid ounces. Okay. Um, I would, I'm going to grip them just as I'm gripping them now from the side, not really squeezing too hard on the bottle um, or creating much tension in the palm of my hand, but simply holding them firmly yet gently so that I can use them for my workout. So we're going to use those. And finally, canned goods. So canned goods are a great option to have. These are about one pound a piece, so they're about 16 ounces. When I use these canned goods, if I wanted to beef up and use a higher amount in pounds, of course, I wouldn't want to use the bigger cans of this because I tend to I have smaller hands, so I'm not going to have a good grip. And we want to be safe when we're doing these exercises with these household items. So I want to make sure that I get something that's equivalent in size, but has added weight to it. So what I thought about doing, which I didn't bring today, but you can always use this option, rice. Rice is a great option. Rice, you can always reuse it. It's in a bag. It's sealed. It has, um, as long as it's not ripped in the bag, the bag isn't ripped, excuse me, or poached or poked in any way, then you can use that to beef up your weight. And rice comes in various sizes. They come in one pound packages, five pound packages, 10, 12, 20, and so forth and so on. So you can use rice. Another thing you could do is if you have sand, um, maybe you have some sand from a project that you were building or you just have it around, something around to that effect. You can use that as well. You can put it in a Ziploc bag. You can use it. Just make sure it has a good seal on it. And those are some options that you could try before you make the full on commitment to purchase a whole bunch of equipment that you have intentions of using. So now that we've gone over that, I want us to go ahead and start our warm up. And if you have any questions or concerns about what we just talked about, do know that more is coming. So I'll show you some exercises that we can do with our household weights. And then we are going to just enjoy ourselves in this process. 
So for the warm-up today, it's going to be a shorter warm-up than before. I'm going to do one round of exercises so we can get right into the strength training portion of our workout. And then we're going to try to have a good cool down with some quality stretches because I want you to be sure or I want to be sure that you're getting those muscles stretched out so that over the day when they're healing, then you'll feel that they're still working and rebuilding even after this workout, okay? All right, so go ahead and get yourself ready to go. Make sure there are no tripping hazards in the way as I am about to secure the space for myself. Always secure your surroundings, look around you. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna leave those weeds here. And what we're gonna start off with is we're just gonna start off with a little bit of a job. We're gonna do that for one minute. And then what we're gonna include is we're gonna include some jumping jacks. So remember, with your jumping jacks, you can do the overhead reach, okay, or the crossbody reach as a jumping jack option. And then we'll do a few lunges, a few squats, just to get our body nice and warm, a couple of stretches, and then we'll go right into some strength training. All right, in five, four, three, two, one, let's jog it out. I hope you enjoyed that intro. I'm sorry it was so long, but I want you to get a really good feel of what strength training looks like from beginning to continuum, right? It's never an end because we want it to always be in our workout. So, little lifts off the ground. Make sure your arms are moving back and forth. Good. Different than a march, not quite a march. It's a jog. Faster feet, more movement in the shoulders. Arms are bent at the elbows in a 90 degree angle. Good. And you're breathing. Don't forget to breathe. If you think you're forgetting to breathe, say your to do list out loud. And that'll help you to remember to breathe. You got five, four, three, two, one, good, take a breather. And now we're gonna go into our jumping jacks. One minute of jacks. Any option that you like, either the regression or the full on jumping jack. In four, three, two, one, jack it out. Make sure that 
that your wrist isn't flexing towards the back or folding towards the front, but your fingers are stretched out at either end of your body laterally. And you can look in either direction and see your thumb pointing up towards the ceiling. You'll know that your arms are stretched out correctly. You're not flexing your, your wrist if you cannot see your fingers. So if you can see your fingers, your four fingers, then you have a little bit of a flexion in your wrist. But if you can't see them, that means that you're good in shoulder height. So now let's round the back, bring interlocking the fingertips, tuck your chin, look for your belly button, and breathe. One more. Good. Drop your arms down, and let's go ahead and stretch our IT band, right? So that's a, like a whole body stretch, right leg behind the left, right arm is up and over, pulling and pushing to the left side, feet are planted, and we're breathing. Remember the whole stretch is for at least 15 seconds before we deep, we stretch a little bit deeper or we change the stretch. And let's change. Left leg behind the right. Left arm is up. Fingertips towards the ceiling. Our palm is open. And reach. Remember not to fold forward or bring that arm in front of the face. Good. And come down. Awesome. If you need water, grab some water and we're going to go ahead and get right into our strength training workout. Now you might be saying, wow, Paul, that was a really quick warm up. As I mentioned before, with a strength training workout, because you have time to rest in between the sets and you're not doing as many reps, especially starting out, then you are able to do a warm-up that's not as extensive as it would be if you were doing plyometric exercises, uh, aerobic exercises, or even an anaerobic workout where your heart rate is going to get truly, like, highly elevated. So... What I do encourage you to do is make sure you get some good food in your body before you start a strength training workout um, because that's going to help you get the energy you need to complete the workout for one. And for two, you're going to be burning a lot more than you think when you do a strength training workout. If you're not sure what to eat, partner up with a nutritionist or a dietitian, someone to help you. Build a, a, a eating plan that works for you. Not every eating plan that you see around is, may work for you. You might need a specialized plan. If you need a recommendation, I'm sure there are sources out there that can assist you, maybe at your local grocery store or at your local pharmacy or even on campus. So just be sure to look out for those resources. Ask around to get the, that assistance that you need. All right, what I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with my two cans. If you are able to grab two cans and bring them to the floor for your workout, go ahead and grab them, okay? If you don't have gloves, don't worry about it. The things that we're going to use today, you shouldn't need gloves for them um, because they all have some type of wrapping, which I kept on mine, and you should be good to go with them. However, if you find that your hands are getting really sweaty, you can always grab a towel to wipe off your hands and the objects that you'll be using, especially the plastic bottles, so that you don't have any incidents where it's slipping out of your hand. Now, the first exercise we're going to do is we're going to do a bicep curl. Biceps are these top parts of your arms. We're going to work mainly big muscles. When I say big muscles, I mean muscles that you tend to use on a daily muscle daily basis, but you don't realize that those are your big muscles. For example, you use your arms, right, to lift things, to type, and whatnot. 
So big muscles that you would use that you may not feel working are your biceps, your triceps, your forearms. You're definitely using the muscles in your fingers, right? But we wouldn't really call the muscles in your fingers the big muscle, okay? Chest muscles are big muscles. Thigh muscles are big muscles. Um, hamstrings. Um, muscles like that. Those are big muscles. Uh, those are the muscles that we're going to try to touch on today. And as we go on, we'll try to touch on muscles that surround the big muscles and support the big muscles, as well as the smaller muscles that kind of, we kind of have to seek out with a specific exercise in order to get them up and going. All right? All right. Bicep curls. Arms at your side. Elbows are open. Okay? And palms are forward. But, again, you're not having a flexion in the wrist. Okay? But your wrist is in line with your elbow, with your arm, okay? When you get ready to do a bicep curl, make sure any standing strength training exercise that you have good posture, keep your feet underneath you, all right? About at least waist hip, hip width apart, hip width apart. So with your arms by your side, you're then going to bend the elbow and lift. When you lift, again, please make sure that you're not rotating the can downward so that it exposes more of your wrist towards the back and you have more of a, a flexion in the wrist. You don't want that. Keep your wrist nice and neutral. Then you're gonna lower down and then you're gonna lift. The other thing you don't want to do is you don't want when you lift that you also lift your elbows because what you're doing now is you're taking the work from the bicep and you're transferring it to another muscle that's not intended to be used for this particular exercise. So again, arms start at your side, you curl slowly and gently to start. doesn't have to be anything too um, strenuous. And the reason why you do that is because you don't want any other muscle in your body jerking while you're working with weights. That's very dangerous. So sometimes you might see people swing a heavy weight and their whole upper body is moving. They're working with a heavier, heavier weight, for one. And two, they've probably been doing it for a longer period of time. If starting out, you find that you have to jerk and really exert force in order to lift your weight, drop to a lower weight, okay? Because what you really should be doing is you should be focusing on the only muscle that you're trying to work at that time, and you're keeping a nice, firm, grounded form so that you do not hurt yourself and you don't knock anything else out of alignment. Let's do three more. And two, and one more. Very good. Now, you might have found that to be really easy. That's totally fine. You can always change the weight if you find it to be very easy. So if I wanted to do another bicep exercise or upper body exercise in my arms, and I wanted to use a higher weight, then I could do a, maybe like a, I could do a tricep press with my juice bottles. The only thing about it is I would only use one and not two. I'm gonna use one and not two, but I'm just showing you that they are the same size and you can use them equally. For the bicep, I'll show you that first, bicep curl, or you could reverse your bicep curl and start up at the top and then lower down slowly and then bring it up a little bit quicker and lower down slowly. Keep your elbows close to your shirt. Don't let your arms pass your thighs, by the way, okay? Get, keep a good grip on those juice bottles, all right? Now I'm gonna use one of them to do my tricep, um, actually tricep extension, not a tricep press. And what I want to do is I'm going to take this juice bottle and I'm gonna hold it or cover the top with one hand and support the bottom with the other part of, with my other hand. And I'm gonna bring my arms up above my head. I'm gonna kneel down so you can see. Bringing my arms above my head, you can stay standing if you choose to, but just so that you can see me from top to bottom. And I'm going to keep my elbows close to my ears, my arms close to my ears, and now what I want to do is I want to bend at the elbow and bring the juice bottle behind my head, okay? And simply extend my arms, taking the bend out of my elbow. Now even while I do this, my belly button is pulled in, even my glutes are squeezing so that I am supporting my lower back 
and my upper back as I do this exercise, I'm concentrating only on the back of my arm, only on the triceps. Similar muscles that you would concentrate on if you were doing push-ups, okay? Inhale and exhale. Any part that seems hard to you for any strength training exercise, that's the part that you want to use the exhale on, okay? So if I found myself, if it's easy for me to bend my elbows, that's where I inhale. If it's harder for me to lift the juice bottle, then I'm going to exhale, okay? Breathing out, okay, helps you to recruit some other muscles to help you as you do this exercise, okay? Keep going with me. Now, if you've done this or if you've been doing this for as long as I've been doing this during this workout, then you're going to feel some muscles starting to feel fatigued, starting to feel as if you've been lifting a weight, right? There's a little bit of burning, all right, in that muscle area, a little bit of tingling. You're feeling maybe a little bit of tension in your upper back, behind your shoulders specifically, right? And that's okay. As long as it's not a major discomfort, you're going to feel some mild discomfort when you work out. But any major discomfort, you need to address with your position. Let's do three more. And two. And one more. Very nice. Okay. Now you might be saying, Paula, you said that we would only be doing a few reps, a few sets. Yes, that is very true. But as you can see, I get carried away when I start talking about the exercise and the workout. So feel free to take pauses as I continue to just give you more information that you can hopefully use. All right? Take breaks. Jump back in it with me, even as I explain the exercise. Now, another exercise I want to show you, now moving on to more so exercises that work the chest and the upper back. The first thing I want to show you is called a halo. So a halo is something that you can do with a kettlebell. You can also do it with a typical um, free weight, okay? In this case, I'm going to use my smaller bottle of oil and I'm going to stay kneeling so that you can see me. If you want to kneel with me and it's uncomfortable for you to be on the floor, grab your mat and lay it out, okay? Now, for the halo, I'm going to face you first. I am still pretending as if I'm standing. And by that, I mean I'm still keeping my knees underneath my hips. My knees are at least hip width apart, okay? They could be wider to be about shoulder width apart if I were working with something super heavy. But because I'm not, I'm going to keep them hip width apart. I am going to support the top of my bottle, support the bottom of my bottle. My bottle is sealed, unopened, okay? If you have one, use it for just that. Use a sealed bottle to prevent, again, any um, leakage or any hazards to uh, anything that's drip on the floor to create a hazard, okay? So hand on the top, hand on the bottom. For this, with a halo, that same tricep um, extension that we were doing position, we started with our hand above our, uh, behind our head. But in this case, we're going to start with our oil above our head. Now, elbows are in, and what we want to do is we want to create exactly what the word says, a halo. Just a small ring around the head, which means that you have to keep your elbows tight around you and allow the wrists to help with the movement. Now, my elbows, uh, they started out at shoulder height, as yours should. What you should not be doing is doing a really big circle and having your arms flail all around your head. It's a very small movement. It's a very tight movement. And what it does, again, it recruits some, it uses the big muscles, but it also recruits some smaller muscles, okay? Now, because I am moving in one direction, I'm going to change direction. So whenever you're doing an exercise that doesn't require both hands equally moving at the same time, or you moving in the same direction at the same time, you have to give yourself time to do 
both sides or move in both directions. Don't tuck your head to get the, the bottom around, okay? Keep the movement small. Keep your chin hovered or parallel to the floor and keep your arm chest tight, all right? Your show, excuse me, your elbow chest tight. If you were doing that right, you should have found something here in the back of the shoulders or in the upper back, okay? All right, let's talk about some leg exercises that we can do. And some leg exercises that we've done is we've done our lunges, we have done our squats, all right? But some things that we can do with our weight is maybe we want to do a lunge with what's called a figure eight. So if you need your mat, you can keep your mat for support. I'm gonna move mine. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to use my heavy bottle, the one with the handle, okay? My heavy bottle of oil with the handle. And what I want to show you is I'm going to still do my lunge, my static lunge that we've been doing, but this time I wanna add what's called uh, an under over move to it, okay? And this move takes a little bit of coordination, but I know you can do it. And it's you just adding weight. I'm also gonna show you an option that takes away the coordination a bit, but it still allows you to use the weight with your lunges. So, my figure eight move, okay, my weight is being held in one hand to start. This is gonna be one of those exercises where we're going to do a few on one side and then we're gonna to have to switch to the other side, okay? Switch the weight to the other side. So my weight or my bottle is in my right hand. I'm going to step forward with my right leg. I'm going to bring my oil over and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch legs and bring it under, okay? Switching hands. And step back, under, over, step back, under, over, okay? And other side, under, over, under, over. Step back, under, over. Still my lunge, under, over, okay? Still coming down 99 degree angle as much as possible, under and over, okay? Again, coordination, it's still using some body weight, but you're also adding extra weight to you to help you uh, build on your workout. All right, another thing you can do with your lunges is you can do a bit of a row with your weight and in your lunge position. So if you needed your mat, you could use your mat, but what you would do is you'd come down in your lunge position all the way down to the floor. And then what you could do is you can do what's called like a lawnmower start position. And all you're doing is you're gonna take your weight and you're gonna lower it down and then pull it back with a row, okay? Push and pull, and push and pull, okay? Now, when you do that, you can use the weight. I'm gonna switch this out because of its length and try to get something that's a little bit shorter that won't necessarily impede my range of motion. And I'm reaching for the outside of my shoe and pulling it back. Still in my lunge position, okay? Not a lot of leg work going on here, However, I can still work my arms in this position and I'm still getting a nice stretch from the lunge. Then I would switch sides. Elbows on top, my weight is in my hand and it's reaching to the inside angle of my foot and I'm pulling it back. My elbow comes up and back and down and up and back and down and up and back, okay? down, up and back, okay, it's a row. All right, some other things we could try using what we already know. If we wanted to do something with our squats, then we could take our medium-sized bottle of oil, we could have it at our chest, and 
every time we squat down, we could push our weight up, okay? So we could squat and push our weight up and pull it down. And push our weight up and pull it down. Push and pull it down, okay? That's another exercise you could do. And then once you're done with a few sets, a few reps in each set, then you want to make sure that you get a nice good cool down. And your cool down could be just like your warm up. You could do one minute of jogging, just not so intense. So let's go ahead and do our one minute of jogging. In three, two, one, let's jog it out. One minute of jogging. And again, not as intense, just a little movement. Instead of jogging, you could decide to walk. Especially if you warmed up with a run, you could jog for your cool down. If you started out with walking for your warm up, you could start with low impact marches as your cool down. Okay? Because remember, I said with weight, your heart rate is going to be elevated, just not as much as it would be maybe in an anaerobic workout. Okay? And breathe. Just a little movement in the feet. And we want to stretch warm muscles, right? Good. Let's give it about 20 more seconds. And 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Very good. Now arms out to the side. And let's do some really big arm circles to the front. Big arm circles to the front. And let's switch to the back. Good. Three, two, and one. Now let's do that arm stretch we've done before. We're going to cross the chest, bring the opposite arm underneath, both elbows to cross paths. And we want to pull the arm that's across the elbow more towards us, feeling a stretch on the outside of the shoulder. Very nice. And just hold. And when you are grocery shopping, when you are doing any activity of daily living, any activity outside of your workout, be sure to use the same skills and form that you've learned to help protect your body, protect your bones, your tendons, your muscles, your ligaments, okay, from injury and from being worn. Let's switch sides, okay? So when you are getting that case of water at the grocery store, use your squat. When you are lifting uh, those heavy bags from the trunk of your car and carrying them, to your kitchen, to your front door, use your lunge, okay? Um, when you are reaching for things that are high up in your cabinet, use your toe reach, okay? Your reach ups, um, reaching up on your toes, heels are up, pulling your belly button in. Five more seconds. Use the same information you've learned here in your daily life. Good, bring your arms behind you, interlock the fingers, Push through to the chest, shoulders are down, and breathe. All right, so use good form, always, always. When you're standing on the line, uh, make sure that you have your feet at least hip width apart, okay? And you, you're supporting your weight, your upper body weight, okay? And round the back. When you're pushing your grocery cart, okay, make sure that you can you can use a lunge and do that as well. Step into it when you're doing the push, all right, and recruit some muscles that you may have recruited before to do that very same thing on a regular basis. Good. All right, let's do our three breaths. Again, telling our body we've done a good job. We have tried something new, and we're very proud of ourselves. So let's bring our feet together. 
Let's bring our arms down, kneel down, squat down a little bit, inhale, bring our arms up. As we inhale and bring our arms down as we exhale. Again, inhale, bring arms up, pull your belly button in, and turn the palms out, exhale, and round the arms down. One more time, inhale, arms come up, palms are facing, now turn the palms out, and exhale. Very good job today. I hope you learned a lot. I hope to see you soon, and if you're able, get some things to bring to class next time. And we'll do a workout together again. Until then, bye for now.